to first uh, start off by saying, Hola, como estas? Me llamo es Roberto Sullivan. Y vivo en la ciudad de Brockton. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for being here tonight. I do want to uh, recognize some of the elected officials that are here. We have uh, Council President Shirley Azak is here. Thank you, Shirley. We have State Senator Michael Brady. Thanks for being here, Senator. We have State Representative Jerry Cassidy. Thank you for being here, State Representative. We have Ward 2 City Council Tom Monahan. Thank you for being here. We have Councilor Lodge and former Mayor Moises Rodriguez. Thank you for being here, Councilor. Bishop Tony Branch, who is the elected representative to the Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical School. <laughs> Councilor Jack Lally just joined us. Thank you for being here, Councilor. I also want to thank the city clerk, Tony Zioli, who's in the back for helping out as well. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. I met with the Latino Women's Association here. I'm Mayor Bob Sullivan, if you don't know who I am, but I, I, uh, I, I met just several weeks ago and uh, you know, I, I had expressed uh, grave concerns of what's going on to the people of Puerto Rico. Uh, what has happened uh, since Maria and the earthquakes and the lack of respect and response from the current administration in the White House. We need to do better as a community. We need to do better, quite honestly, as human beings. So when it was suggested that we have a prayer session, I, I jumped on it 100%, and we'd have it here in the people's home known as City Hall. So tonight there's a great agenda of folks that are gonna be speaking, and we have some religious clergy here as well. And then at the end, we're gonna try to strategize and express how we can help the good folks, American citizens, that live in Puerto Rico, and we need to always remember that. So again, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna ask, I'm not sure who's joining us now, but I know we wanna raise the proud flag of Puerto Rico. And uh, I, I would like to have Inez Figueroa uh, please come up. And uh, we have Angel, we have Carmen, we have quite a few folks that wanna speak, rightfully so. So Inez, Angel. Thank you, Inez. Thank you, Angel. This is a prayer vigil tonight. It doesn't matter what religion. I'm a Roman Catholic myself. It doesn't matter if you're Catholic, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, uh, or even if you're an atheist. We, we need to come together as a community. We need to support each other as one. Together is the key word here in Brockton. But we also have to recognize that we have great people on the island of Puerto Rico right now that are dying, that are dying. Loss of life, and it's unacceptable. We need to figure out from a strategy of compassion, of love, and, and humanity how we can come together as a city of champions to help relatives, loved ones, and Americans that are suffering greatly in Puerto Rico. Uh, so again, I, I want to hear from everybody that, that wants to speak and share tonight. I want to hear um, from the religious. I want to pray. I want to pray for these folks as well. And, uh, and our prayers will be answered because we will overcome what's happening right now in Puerto Rico and help people. Help. And remember, they need our help, they welcome our help, and we owe it to them. So with that being said, the microphone, I'd like to have Angel and Inez say some things. Thank you, Mayor Sullivan. Thank you, everyone in attendance. I have to say that this is absolutely a group effort. This is no one person uh, who, whose idea manifested. But I do definitely want to thank Inez Figueroa because uh, I think we was at the NAACP meeting a couple of weeks ago, uh, maybe three or four weeks ago, and she said, you know, I want to do something for Puerto Rico and I want to meet with the mayor and discuss it. And so uh, the mayor was, was kind enough to meet with a group of Latinos um, representing an array of community organizations and um, regular citizens who are concerned and, and want sort of a little bit more visibility of the Latino community here in Brockton. And so one of the things that we felt Inez felt 
um, that she wanted to do is a, is a prayer vigil for the tragedies that have been occurring in, in Puerto Rico. First with Hurricane Maria, where thousands of people lost their lives. Not two or three like it was reported, but thousands. We have actually a young person who's going to do a poem, read a poem, excuse me, um, that talks about how some of the lives were lost uh, due to, to that, uh, that tragedy. But really, Inez you know, wanted to, to have the community come together. But again, I, I do want to acknowledge other folks. Um, it was also the newly formed Diversity Initiatives Neighborhood Association with Ali and folks. Ali, where you at? Ali. Somewhere, right? Come on up here. If you had anything to do with the original meeting that we had with the mayor, please come on up. We also have uh, Tito and his wife from the Ashby Park yes. Neighborhood Association, Felicita, others. Please, come on up. This is a group effort here. Thank you. Please. There's others who are being humble, and that's okay. But um, what, I, what I thought to start out with is uh, definitely thank everyone, the mayor, the elected officials, uh, the, the clergy who are represented here, the organizations, the media, the residents. Honestly, this turnout is, is way more than I thought. I, I went outside. I thought we were going to have it outside. And it's, it's good because it's a little chilly. Yeah. Um, but to see how many people are here today who are Latinos, non-Latinos coming together, it, it's really uh, humbling. And the highlight of my day, to be honest. I had a very long day, but this is the way to, that I would love to end it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about in a second. I want to pass the mic about who are the Latinos. I, I might as well just mention it here. There was a report by the Gaston Institute um, for Latino public policy three years ago that reported specifically in Brockton, who are the Latinos in Brockton? And the numbers are approximately, and it may have changed since then, but approximately 10,000 Latinos in the city of Brockton, of which 6,000 are Puerto Rican. So that's the majority. Um, not to say that we have more value or less value, we are all equal. I truly believe that. Whether you're Latino or non-Latino, that's not what this is about. This is about a tragedy that occurred and us coming together to show solidarity for uh, a group of people who are U.S. citizens at that. Um, not a lot of people know that, unfortunately, either. Um, so I wanted to mention that, you know, the, the population of who the Latinos are and the tragedy that occurred in Maria. Thousands of people lost their life. Then there were multiple earthquakes. Guys, thousands of earthquakes occurred in Puerto Rico. 2,000, okay? Not one or two or three, but thousands, right? My father lives in Puerto Rico. My parents are retired. They worked their whole lives here in factories, uh, saved enough money and bought a home in Puerto Rico, and now they live there. My father, he, he doesn't sleep well, and so he was up at 4 o'clock drinking coffee, and he felt the house shake, but no damage, thankfully. Um, but the, the worry, there's people who are displaced. There's people who are living outside of their house um, who are worried that if they live in their house, the, the, houses, the, the, the structures are going to fall on them. Um, so we're, we're coming together to, to pray, right? We're people of faith, um, regardless of your den denomination of belief. Uh, we believe in a higher power and, and, a, and a God, and we want to come together and show our faith. Um, so we're gonna, thank you to all the clergy who are here. Um, I am going to now just pass the mic to whoever wants to say a couple of words. Thank you. Okay. Ines, I, I do want to recognize State Representative Claire Cronin. Thank you, Representative, for being here as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yo soy bajita. I'm so tiny, but anyway, I just want to say thank you, everyone. Muchísimas gracias a toda esta gente latina que están aquí hoy representando a Puerto Rico. Uh, es, un, es un placer yo estar aquí hoy con tantas personas. A mí yo no pensaba que tanta gente iban a venir aquí hoy. Okay. Estoy muy emocionada, de verdad, porque esto es un labor. Puerto Rico está pasando por algo bien mal. Y hay otra tormenta que viene de Puerto Rico el miércoles. Y Puerto Rico se nos va a hundir. So, tenemos que estar juntos, gestar, estar juntos ahí en oraciones para Puerto Rico. So, esto es un orgullo. Thank you everybody for coming. I appreciate it. I'm very, very emotional because I was not expecting this many people here today. Uh, this is something that came out just like that. We meet and we did it and we did it and we done. I thank you, um, Mayor Sullivan, because he um, opened this door for us. See, uh, I mean, I went to him, I had a meeting. He said, sure, let's go do it. 
and he's here today with us. I thank you very much. Thank you all these political people here. Um, I'm gonna pass the microphone to my daughter Anna. She's the spokesperson for Latin Women Association and she has something to say. Okay, I'm very, I get very emotional and I don't wanna cry. Okay. <laughs> Hi. A little bit higher, Mom. <laughs> Hello? Can anyone hear me? All right. Um, first, I would like to say thank you. Um, it's really nice looking out here and seeing all kinds of diversities in here with us um, representing um, our island of Puerto Rico. So I'm very happy to see everybody. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight for our prayer ritual for Puerto Rico. Um, First and foremost, we want to thank our Mayor Sullivan for giving us this opportunity, thank you Mayor Sullivan, to support Puerto Rico and those Latinos who reside in Brockton. Um, I have family in Puerto Rico, my uncle's in Puerto Rico. Um, we're all feeling it here. Um, so on behalf of the residents of Brockton, thank you Mayor Sullivan for having this event for us. Um, as Puerto Rico is getting over Hurricane Maria, it got hit with earthquakes and tremors that destroyed the island, taking down homes, schools, and businesses, families sleeping on cots, under tents, and removed from their homes. We here in our city of Brockton are doing the prayer for Puerto Rico because they need to know they are not alone. I also want to take a minute to thank Inez Figueroa and the Latin Women's Association. The Latin Women's Association, with Inez's help, helped the families of Puerto Rico through Hurricane Maria. Um, our city of Brockton reached out to the Puerto Rico families. They came to us, they are now in homes, they are now working, their children are in school, and they are progressing here in our city of Brockton. Um, not only um, is Inez my mom, but um, <laughs> Inez has reached out to a lot of people in Brockton, especially our Latino community. Um, Inez Figueroa is the one that gets our Latinos out to vote, to do your census, yes, and to support our events that we have here in Brockton. So um, on that note, again, I just want to thank Mayor Sullivan. I am proud to be a resident of the city of Brockton with this that you have done for our, for our people in Puerto Rico. So thank you very much, Mayor Sullivan. I want to take this moment to say, um, first I'm introducing myself. Okay. Stay un poco alto de ti. <laughs> I am, my name is Ali Brioso, and I'm a very passionate uh, first resident in the city of Brockton for over 20 years. I am part of the umbrella of the Latin Women's Association. I am here today because we have come together unified in a very diverse manner with a mission at hand. I'm also a faith believer. I've had the experience, Mayor Sullivan, as a Catholic Roman being the upbringing. As we know, Latinos, from my experience, I had a very, very awesome Puerto Rican cultural friends and family when I was growing up in Cambridge. And um, the Catholic ministries was the foundation and the first teachings of spirituality and how to love and be there and support one another. I don't see the neighborhoods or the communities or the love not saying that there is no love there, but I don't see the compassion or the empathy as I remember growing up amongst the Latino and diverse culture. I'm here today in faith and believing that this is the first of many unified manners spiritually with hope, faith, and awareness to know that we ought to come together. And I also know that sometimes troubled waters have to take place. And literally, that is an island of Puerto Rico. I actually have a sister-in-law whose family is from Puerto Rico. I haven't shared everything of my life. I have to keep a little bit. <laughs> so I understand the love, but most, I love the Lord. I love God. 
And because I love God, I don't see color, I don't see race, I don't see creed, I don't see gender, I don't see politics. I see that we can find a resolution and be there for one. I don't want to see Puerto Rico continue on. I ask the Lord for his grace and mercy to, to sway those troubles and let this be a moment to be unified. Because there are many families, and if that island one day may go asunder, then we ought to prepare and welcome those from Puerto Rico to reestablish their lives in our cities, in our state, and in our country, because Puerto Rico is America. And I am going to um, close out because I want to share an experience for the first, uh, first awareness of it was the hurricane when, yes. When I was with Inez and we went to Brockton Housing Authority, we also have to take recognition in the departments of the city that actually extended their services. We understand the dynamics of wait lists, that there is a need, but we also have to recognize that a housing authority had taken a certain amount of units in places to be able to house residents. That is very important because we understand that there's a need in our cities, in our state, in our country. But when there is a crisis, things have to change. And we have to be humble, we have to be peaceful, and we have to put ourselves aside and be unified. That's it. Thank you. I would like, I would like to recognize Councilor Lodge Rita Mendez for being here. Thank you, Councilor. Hi, good evening. Can everyone hear me? Yes. I'm Grizel Quinones, and behind me um, is Rigoberto Quinones, and we're also from um, Ashtree Park Neighborhood Association, but I'm also here, not because of an association, but I'm here because of a multicultural family, friends, neighbors that are all gathered here today in regards to helping Puerto Rico. I come from a diverse family, and I do have family in Puerto Rico, and I have to say that in the times that we've had these hurricanes, I've seen so much devastation. And it comes to me and in my heart to say that we have to stand united and be responsible enough that we are all people of color, of creed, of different nationalities. And no matter where we stand, there's always going to be a devastation in all different national, you know, in all different states of the world and all countries. And if we're just gonna divide ourselves, then you know what, let us just call, come together. Because we are all responsible for what happens in all our, na in all our nationality, in all our nations, and all around the world. In bringing responsibility as leaders, as community associates, associations, um, family, friends, it's to understand that Inez, Felicita, um, Ali and everyone else in this room, if you all look at each other, you're all looking at all different, you know, looking at different people from the different nationalities. I've never had that opportunity to be in Puerto Rico, but to hear what is going on. My mother passed five years ago. She wasn't alive then, but her, um, where she was in the cemetery, excuse me it was all crumbled and it was all shattered and it was all departed and separated. It kind of hurts me as well. Um, but I know that we all have to come here united for our common grounds for one purpose and it is to bring Puerto Rico family all together no matter where we stand and where we are because it can happen tomorrow again. And if we do something today for what we're doing right at this moment for Puerto Rico, for a prayer vigil for Puerto Rico, all together can be united. And if I can just say this quickly in Spanish. Todos unidos podemos solidaridamente traer unidad entre todas las gente de, de diferentes naciones. No somos solamente, no tenemos que solamente ser latinos 
puertorriqueños hispanos. Todos tenemos que unirnos porque Puerto Rico es para todos. Para igualmente es que toda persona sufre, toda persona tiene un momento de saber que nos estamos fundados en los Estados Unidos y estamos fundados ahora en la casa gobernal de, de Brockton. Y aquí tenemos a la derecha nuestro alcalde de Brockton, Mayor Robert Sullivan, y nos dio la oportunidad alcalde. para estar aquí, para traer nuestras ideas y traer nuestras oraciones y traer a nuestras gentes pastoriales unidas, unidas. unidas. y unidas para decir que nuestras puertas, nuestros corazones y, y brazos estamos, están abiertos para darles a ustedes ese amor y esa oportunidad para traer todas las nacionalidad, nacionalidad, nacionalidades, comunidades de todos los países unidos. Gracias por esta oportunidad y que Dios los bendiga. I would also like to recognize Council Lodge Tina Cardoza. Thank you for being here, Councilor. Thank you. I would also like to recognize uh, Mrs. Dubois, who is here on behalf of her daughter, State Representative Michelle Dubois. She's on her way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, my other invitado aquí es Ed Miller, Eres del Censo, and va a hablar un poquito que lo necesario que es llenar el censo este año. Necesitamos todos los latinos que llenen el censo este año, que digan presente, porque si ustedes no llenan el censo, no contamos aquí en este país. No contamos como que no hay latinos en Broughton. So, tenemos que ser muy eh, inteligentes, como decimos nosotros los hispanos. Vamos a llenar el censo. Y para aquí está el señor Ed Miller, que es el que trabaja para el censo de Broughton. Well, I want to thank everybody for the opportunity to talk about the census. Uh, just, just to start, I, when I became the representative of the census here in Brockton, people who worked 10 years ago saying, Ed, Brockton's going to be a tough nut to crack. We didn't have a good count. But I have to thank our mayor, Bob Sullivan, because when I spoke to him, his words, how can I help? When we spoke to uh, former Mayor Rodriguez, same thing. How can we help? To our elected councilors, same thing. Everybody's willing to help. Jerry Cassidy, Claire Cronin, how can we help? And State Senator Michael Brady, same thing. And I have to say thank you because I'm also one of his employees and he's very kind of allowing me <laughs> to work out a schedule. <laughs> And I have to thank him for that, because he understands, and they all understand, how important this is. So the US Census, every 10 years, we take a count of people who live in the United States. That's how our schools get their funding, our cities get their funding. And when we get an undercount, we figure we lose $2,400 per year, every year, for 10 years. We had a bad undercount. But this year we'll have a good one. That's why it's important. It pays for the, the funding we get from the federal government and also how our state gets its funding, which also funds us. So if we have a great count this year, we're going to have a great count. But to do that, I was asked to be the recruiter to help people find jobs, which is a great thing to do. The census is asking people if they're looking for temporary, part-time work, or full-time, make your own schedule, and go into the community to help us find out how many people we need, how many people who live here. And we know we have well over 100,000. That's what we want to count. The, every year, this is how it's important. When you get in something in the mail, they'll ask you to send it back, or you can do an email. Well, they figure about 60% won't do that. You know how it is, you get the mail, you see something. It's not a bill, so I'm gonna put it to the side. 
So we'll come to your door, ask some very basic questions, but that's how important it is. Ten years, we'll be stuck with the number we have. So we want the correct uh, count. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, if you do apply for the U.S. Census, it's $22 an hour for the job. Maybe I should have led with that. 18 years old, older, and 18 by uh, mid-April. So if you have a 17-year-old or an 18-year-old at home and you want them to get a job, it's going to be the best summer job they ever had. I also want to thank Angel, who calls me up every other day and says, I have a referral. And that's what we need. I'll be around. I have uh, slips to hand people. If it's something you want to do and you want to apply, you want to work eight hours on a Saturday or a Sunday, you can do that. You want to do 40 hours, you can do that. But by doing that, you're helping your community, getting us the funding that we need. I guess that's all I have to say. Uh, most people will tell you I'm never out of words, but right now I am. Él dice que si ustedes están interesados en trabajar en el censo, un part-time, un medio tiempo, paga buen dinero, están en la comunidad registrando gente, es bueno y es un, y esto temporalmente. Pero el, el, el pago es bueno, ustedes lo pueden hacer sábado, domingo, su tiempo libre. No tienen que hacerlo ahí a menudo. Si so, ustedes están interesados en trabajar, hablen con él, que él tiene las aplicaciones, le llena todos los formularios. ¿Ok? I also want to recognize and thank Councilor Susan De Castro. Thank you for being here, Councilor. And also, uh, Councilor Jeffrey Thompson. Thank you, Councilor, for being here. State Representative Michelle Dubois has joined us as well. Thank you, Representative. I do just want to reiterate what Mr. Miller was saying, the importance. We only have one shot, ladies and gentlemen. We have to wait 10 years if we don't get it right. And the federal government has given us three shots this time. You can call it in, you can do email, or you can do the, the mail. And please don't be confused with the city of Brockton census that was just sent out. That's not the federal census. That's sent out every year to see if how many registered voters, if you have dogs, license, stuff like that. No, the federal census means we, Brocktonians, can get more dollars for Brockton. So let's get it right. It doesn't get reported to any federal law agency or anything like that. It's just getting the right numbers on the books for the city of Brockton. Thank you, Ed, for what you're doing. I'd also like to thank School Committee member Tony Rodriguez. Thank you for being here, School Committee member. All right, it's Ali Brioso again. And we cannot have a prayer vigil without starting the prayers. Yes. That's what we're here for. Yes. And all this great community initiatives is what helps us in general, and it is part, because we pray for these resources, and it's very important. Right now, I have five pastors, ministries, different ministries that are going to come, Brazilian, American, black, American, as well as Latino, and I'm going to introduce them. But first, respectively, to my faith, and before I came here, I said, God, move by your spirit, meet us here before we arrive, and let our voices and our unity be heard for the cries for Puerto Rico, for our nation, and for us here in our own individual lives. I'm going to open up with calling my apostle, Naomi Burton. She's my spiritual mom. I just introduced her to President Counselor Shirley Azak because Shirley Azak goes to the many years that I've acquainted with my church. And actually right there in that Ward, ward 2, Ward 5 area. Apostle Naomi Burton, please, please come. She is the... She is the founder of Peace of the Kingdom Tabernacle of Prayer. Apostle Naomi Burton owns three properties on this, in this city, and one of them is part of the historical society, which I researched, which is on 81 Green Street. Her, our home ministry is at 33 North Main Street in Brockton, which is next to the uh, Brockton Cable Access TV Network. She also is the owner of the one across the street, which she rents out to um, Pastor Roberto 
Silvera. And in unity, we come together because if you have a home, they have a home, we have a home, and we can cater to our community together. I'm going to now let my apostle, Naomi Burton, begin with a welcome and a prayer for this prayer vigil. God bless you. It is my honor, privilege, and pleasure to be here. It's kind of unexpected for me, but I thank God for the opportunity. And I welcome all of you to Brockton. Brockton is a beautiful place to live. We've been here over 25 years, I guess. And so it is a privilege for me to meet all of you, to see what you're doing, and to be one with you. I'm in agreement with the people of God everywhere that's trying to help each other. And so I was asked to come and to offer a prayer. Don't look at me strange, you know, I look just like you. <laughs> Female. So help me now to pray. Touch and agree. And when we touch and agree, the Lord promises that he will hear and answer us when we come together as one. So we have to be one. Amen. Let me touch somebody's hand. Okay. Father God, in the wonderful, exalted name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, we honor you, we bow in your presence. We know that you are with us, you are here. It is your will for us to be one in Christ, but also one together on this earth. We come to pray for the people of God that are in stress and are suffering various kinds of ordeals. We pray for Puerto Rico, the island and the people of God. All belong to you. They are your children, they are your people. And we ask you that you would send them help from the sanctuary, that you would use those who are sympathetic and uh, have the love of God in their hearts to build and to rebuild Puerto Rico, to send the help that they need. You know what it is. Money is always necessary. But Lord, there are other things that they had stand in need of, homes, Lord, clothes, children to go to school, just to rebuild the whole food. Everything they need, God, you have it. And we honor you and we thank you for your supply, that you have more than enough in this world to meet every need that any and everybody has. So as we come together as one, we thank you, Lord God, for supplying more than enough to help Puerto Rico. Not only Puerto Rico, but wherever there is a need in this whole world, you are there. You promise to be there. And we thank you and we honor you and we give you great praise. Remember the people that are gathered here, whatever their needs are, Lord. We thank you and we honor you for supplying their needs also. In the wonderful and exalted name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. let everybody say amen. 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 Bless you. I do also want to recognize Councilor at Large and former Mayor Gwen Farwell. Thank you, Councilor, for being here. Yes. Now we're going to move forward with our second prayer and Pastor Roberto Silveria of Universal Missionary Church is going to come and pray. First, I'd like to thank God for the privilege and the honor of being here with all of you united on one cause, the Puerto Rican cause today. And thank you, Mayor, for opening the house, your house, to the people of Brockton. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Father, as part Lord of your kingdom, as a servant, I ask the Lord for your mercy. 
Because, Lord, you have been so merciful over us, Lord. And I come to you right now, Lord, because, Lord, that is a cause, Lord, in our heart, God. And you have your people here, Lord, united, Lord, together, Lord, in one, the one that can do the impossible, God Almighty. We come to you, Lord, because we trust you, God. Because we know, God, that you are our God. And we are, God, in your hands. We belong to you, Lord. And Lord, the territory of Puerto Rico, God, belongs to you, God. Right now, Lord, they are going through a tough time. But your word says that you are our shepherd. And we have all that we need, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you, Lord, I pray to you, Lord, that you bless, Lord, right now, Lord, with the provision that Puerto Rico needs, Lord. The Puerto Rican now, Lord, is looking up to you, Lord. As David said, Lord, where will come my help? And we know, Lord, that you, Lord, is the one who will be able to help to send, Lord, the provision to Puerto Rico, God. I ask, Lord, and I thank you because I'm taking ownership, God, that our request today, Lord, will be answered, Lord, because you are God Almighty. And you will, God, accomplish and provide, Lord, as your promise to us, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I say, Amen. Okay. Ahora vamos a cambiar con respeto para el idioma español. Tenemos dos pastores que van a hacer la oración en español. Primero vamos a comenzar con Iglesia del Dios Altísimo Restaurando el Cairo. Pastor Juan Núñez, por favor, ven. I introduced the Spanish ministry because I am newly married and my husband only speaks Spanish of, of the Dominican Republic. And in the midst of us, I wasn't even aware to the full extent of a beautiful, rich, Latino-based uh, parish a place where the worship is there beautiful, the songs, the prayers are in the native language of those who it's important. As we have many other churches, Haitian, Cape Verdean, with respect to diversity, it is a beautiful entity to know that we can come before you and have a multi-language segment of prayers because God hears all. But those who are here need to hear it in their native language. Pastor Juan Junes, please, please. Bueno, gracias. Uh, gracias por invitarme esta noche. Es un placer estar junto a todos ustedes. Estamos unidos con un mismo propósito y es verdad clamar a Dios. En este momento le pido que me acompañe, por favor. Amantísimo Dios Todopoderoso, Dios Eterno, te damos toda gloria y toda honra, Señor Jesús. Te pedimos, Dios, que tú eres el Dios que toca los corazones y transforma la vida. Muchas veces estamos necesitados de tantas cosas materiales, Señor, pero el espacio para encontrarlo es humillarnos delante de tu presencia, clamar a ti, arrepentirnos y buscar tu rostro nuevamente. Y todas las cosas serán añadidas, porque así tú lo dices en tu palabra. Madre, en esta noche maravillosa que otros han hablado y te han pedido, te suplicamos por la ciudad de Puerto Rico, por la, la isla de Puerto Rico, te pedimos por aquellas personas que están pasando situaciones difíciles, te pedimos, Dios, que ellos puedan volver a ti para que tú escuches su clamor y tú hagas tu voluntad. Padre, todo te lo pedimos en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén. Si no estamos olvidando a ningún clergy que no ha sido identificado, si quieres venir a la frente, por favor, hazlo. Quiero ser respetuoso de todo el tiempo y sé que hay otro meeting happening. And there's a couple of things that we want to make sure that we emphasize. There's a young person who's going to come up and do a quick poem. It's going to take yes. about a minute. Um, where are you? <laughs> come on up. It is, what is your name? Selena. Selena is going to do a poem. And just for a little bit of context, um, not to get political, but we are in City Hall, right? Um, President Donald Trump was very offensive to the Puerto Rican people from throwing towels to, the, to, the, to holding funds that were much needed, and from denying the reality of how many people were lost uh, due to Hurricane Maria. So this poem is going to be read 
and has to do with that. And then we also have two testimonies, really quick, of people who were affected. It speaks to the heart and, and the real issue, so we want to give them some time. And then Father Angel is going to lead us in a closing uh, unity circle where we're going to hold hands and, and end in, in prayer. So just for a little bit of, of context of how we're going to end the night. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you so much. Donald Trump stated that 3,000 people did not die in the two hurricanes that hit Puerto Rico. When he left the island, he said after the storm had hit, they had, nowhere, they had anywhere between 16 to 18 deaths. As time went by, it did not go up by much. Then a, lot, as, then a long time later, they started to report nearly large numbers like 3,000. And then I have a poem by... Eliza David Mel, Mel, I don't know how to say it, yeah, okay. but he says, they did not die in the hurricane. They died in pain at home of kidney failure, unable to access the dialysis clinic for weeks. They died gasping for hours near the end when the oxygen tanks they needed to breathe gave out. They died in the dark in the heat of the unsanitary ICU units of burns of gunshot wounds received before the hurricane that they almost certainly would have survived otherwise. They died burning up with fevers of osteoporosis from being in touch with flood waters during the effort to save their neighborhoods. They died in the fear and confusion after being forced to go off their regular medication. They died of heat stroke. They died of disease of antiquity and a crisis of neglect, unworthy, the greatness, wealthiness, and most powerful nations in the human history. They died, but we lived, and we remember. Oh, hi. So at this time, I want to uh, go to the testimony part. We have two individuals, Isabel Torres. No, okay, that's that's fine. We respect that. Felicita. Okay, so I'm going to invite Felicita to speak a little bit about. And actually, guys, Brockton was featured very recently, featuring Felicita in a, in a new segment, um, talking about the experiences of, of folks affected in Puerto Rico and specifically in Brockton. So we have the person who's uh, Felicita was going to speak a little bit about that. And then we'll go into um, the unity circle. And I want to talk a little bit about ways to help, ways that every single person in here can help. Thank you. Uh, real quick, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Gracias, gracias de mi corazón. Uh, when Maria happened, I was here, and uh, my mother was here, and uh, we lost communication. 187 wind per, per hour here in Puerto Rico for 12 hours. So Puerto Rican people was hitting 187 winds right there, 12 hours, nonstop, one hour, two hours. Just imagine, and the first thing you know, your roof is gone, everything is gone. I went five days after Maria, because I had to look for my brother. Uh, my mother was here, she couldn't eat, she couldn't find, we had no communication. So I went to Puerto Rico. My plan was to go to Puerto Rico, grab my brother, and left. I couldn't do that because I ended up staying there for nine days. Uh, actually, my airplane left, my, my airplane was the last one to, to, to leave Puerto Rico, and a minute later, Trump came to Puerto Rico. And it was funny, because I was watching in the little TV and the airplane, and then when I see him doing the, the paper tower, everybody was like, can you turn around, please? Can you turn around? We want to go back to Puerto Rico, but anyway. So, um, I just want to say that I help a lot of families. Uh, Theo, then Eddie, yeah. where you are, Eddie, he's a family from Puerto Rico. He came. Yeah. He was, he, he was Isabel. Uh, this is people that came from Puerto Rico and they was living in the hotel. We got six, um, over 100 families living in the hotel in and, and, and Deran, all over Massachusetts. And I did my best to take everybody out of the the hotel, hotel. and uh, me and Ines, we work together in the family center, and we help all those family nonstop. Uh, my mother's in Puerto Rico right now, and my brother's in Puerto Rico. I live in Ponce, which the earthquake is there. So I just talking to my mother like uh, it was a month ago when that happened, and I was talking to her, and everything was fine. She's she stopped. She's like, give me a minute, and I was like, what's going on? He said, we're moving. It's shaking. My mother's in a wheelchair, and she was by herself. So I imagine myself, I'm like. Uh, yeah. Oof. 
Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Well, I just want to know, pray for Puerto Rico, just pray for them. Uh, it's a lot of homeless people outside. Puerto Rico is a tropical island, so it's raining a lot. And uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of homeless, and, and I wish I can be there and help them. Uh, we go to hard time, and we really good people. We are good people. We like to help. We help anybody, black, white, Chinese, and, and we don't care who you coming from. And people know me, a lot of people know me, and I help, I just, just pick up the phone and I do it. I just, this is me, this is, but when I come from my people, from my Puerto Rican people, I'm there for them because I know, I see it. I live for nine days with no water, with no, uh, waiting eight hours to get gas for my rental. Uh, when I came to Broughton, I went straight to the pond. It was a moment of silence for me, because I went straight to the pond and I put in, you know, I was not waiting for eight hours to get gas. Uh, the first thing that I came to, when I came to Florida, I got a, a, a bottle of water. It was cold. It was a bottle of water cold for the first time in nine days. I couldn't get, you know, and, it's, and my brother took a picture of me in the highway. That's the only way I can get, notif and I was like this, talking to my husband. Did you get the ticket? You know, that's the way I can talk in Puerto Rico because there was no connection. Yeah. Puerto Rico's still suffering. Puerto Rico's still there. And thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for my heart. That, you guys see uh, in, in, in help Puerto Rico. Thank you. Thank you, Felicita. Uh, so I'm going to invite the mayor to, to speak. Uh, like I said earlier, there's, there's a, a very important community meeting happening, and the mayor has to depart to that, understandably so. We're so grateful that the mayor is here, and so I'm just going to let him say a few words before he leaves. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm proud to be a Brocktonian. This is what Brockton's about, coming together. This is what it means. However, we can't just come together one day. We need to come together every day. Every day. I've, I've had the privilege to visit the island of Puerto Rico on two different occasions. It's not just a beautiful place, but there's beautiful people there. And we need to remember that. They're dying, they're suffering, and as Brocktonians, we need to make a difference. The man in the White House isn't making a difference. We can make a difference on a local level. So I just, I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here. I want to thank all the elected officials. But more importantly, remember, today is the first day of many days, and we will make a better day for Puerto Rico. God bless you all. Thank you. Closing, and this is how we're going to close out. And with respects, Inez will have the final word of Latin Women's Association, as well as the Quinones, Mr. and Mrs. Quinones, Tito Quinones of Ashley Park Neighborhood Association. And we have one additional pastor, Hugo Briones, who's going to pray in Spanish from the Iglesia Jesucristo de Mi, Le Mi Libertad. And we're going to have a closing lead prayer circle, Father Angel Marrero. And we're going to have a song by Minister Sharon Drayton. And then we will close out with Inez. Yes. Pastor Hugo Quinones. Buenas noches. Dios les bendiga. Amen. Estamos aquí reunidos con un propósito de que de rogar a nuestro Dios por la ayuda de nuestros hermanos puertorriqueños. Mi nombre es Hugo Briones, soy el pastor de la Iglesia de Jesucristo, mi libertador aquí en Brockton. Eh, vengo de Honduras, pero soy eh, una persona que Dios ha enviado a este lugar uh, desde, le desde muy lejos para traer la palabra de paz, la palabra de amor. Somos uno en Cristo. No hay religión, no hay denominación. Porque la palabra de Dios nos dice que en Jesús somos uno solo. Un solo cuerpo, diferentes miembros. Estamos aquí para humillarnos delante de Dios. Voy a leer una porción de la palabra que se encuentra en Segunda de Crónicas, capítulo 7, verso 14. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Dice, si se humillare mi pueblo, sobre el cual mi nombre es invocado, y oraren, y buscaren mi rostro, y se convirtieren de sus malos caminos... 
entonces yo oiré desde los cielos y perdonaré sus pecados y sanaré su tierra. El Señor nos llama a unidad. El Señor nos está llamando tanto niños, jóvenes y adultos. A esta generación, tiempos malos y difíciles. Nos llama a humillarnos delante de Dios. Es la única solución. Y esto que estamos haciendo hoy en día es humillándonos delante de Dios. Porque sin Dios no podemos hacer nada. Sin Cristo no podemos mover nada. Él es el único que tiene la última palabra. Oramos a Él y si nos humillamos de todo corazón, Él oirá de los cielos y va a sanar la tierra. Todo esto que está aconteciendo está en manos de Dios. Este clamor es oído ante el Padre y vamos a ver la respuesta muy pronto. Unámonos en fe, en Cristo y todo será diferente. Oramos al Padre. Padre, en el nombre de Jesús te damos gracias por tu amor, bondad y misericordia. Padre, gracias por esta oportunidad que nos das de estar delante de tu presencia. Y en esta hora, Señor, nos unimos, Señor, aleluya, en un clamor, pidiéndote, Padre amado, por misericordia y para que tú, Padre, en el nombre de Jesús, envíes, Señor, aleluya, la ayuda necesaria que nuestros hermanos puertorriqueños necesitan en esta hora. Padre, tú tienes el control del tiempo, el control de las situaciones, mi Dios amado, y en el nombre de Jesús te pedimos, Padre, que seas tú tomando el control de todas las situaciones, Señor. Trae la paz, Señor, al corazón de cada familia, de cada hombre, de cada mujer, de cada niño, Señor, en cada ciudad. Padre, nos unimos en el nombre de Jesús, con mis hermanos y hermanas, y con cada uno de los que aquí estamos, Señor, rogándote por ayuda, para que seas tú, mi Dios amado, a través de tu Espíritu Santo, o oh, trayendo, Señor, aleluya, la ayuda y la paz que necesitamos en nuestros corazones. Padre, gracias te damos, provee a cada necesidad de mis hermanos puertorriqueños y de todo el mundo, Señor. Te rogamos por cada ciudad y por cada pueblo. Gracias Señor porque has permitido abrir este espacio aquí en la municipalidad de Brockton Señor, esto es el principio de un avivamiento Señor un principio de que los pueblos nos uniremos porque es el llamado que tú estás haciendo de unirnos Señor en la fe del Hijo del Hombre en la fe en Jesucristo Señor nuestro, Padre gracias te damos Señor, escucha el clamor de tus hijos Padre, en el nombre de Jesús oramos, Amén, amén. y Amén, Dios les bendiga por la palabra de Dios y la palabra de Dios es que sus, uh, nos aguanta a nosotros durante este tiempo para saber que Dios es Dios para de antes de ahora y para siempre la palabra nunca se cambia y ahora antes que cerramos yo le, um, a Inés Figueroa de la Mujeres Asociación Latino va a introducir el Padre Ángel Marero pero con respeto yo vi a unos de nosotros en la comunidad con mucha fe que siempre está con todos nosotros en la ciudad de Brockton. Bishop Tony Branch, no sé si él está aquí porque él tiene otro meeting. He did, okay, no está aquí, pero yo estoy con respeto. What I did was, I said I'm going to pass it over to Inez, but before I do with respect, before we close with our clergy, I, I believe in respect. Bishop Tony Branch was here. He is going to the, uh, he has to go to the meeting as well. And with respect, I wanted to make sure that we acknowledge his presence, we acknowledge him in our city, and it's most important because he's very versatile, very diverse in many areas of the city in departments that it's important to recognize someone, especially when they are given the name bishop. You don't, you're not just a bishop because we add that to your name. There's some kind of spiritual protocol with that. So now, let's move forward with Inez, and then she's going to introduce Father Angel Moreno. Hi. First of all, I just want to say, I have a lady who's going to do the story what happened with Maria and said how she got here to Brockton and yeah. how can we help her. But she got it very emotional, so she's not going to say it. But I just want to say something. I have my, my brother in Puerto Rico and I had a nephew in Puerto Rico. Yesterday, my nephew was talking to me on the phone and he said, Titi, the house is shaking. Let me go, let me go outside and lay down outside. I don't want to die inside the house. And that hurt my feelings a lot because he's my nephew and he's outside with his mother and his other brothers and sister, afraid to go inside and the house shaking, shaking very hard. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Now I'm going to introduce you to Father. 
Él viene, él, él, he's come from... Walton, de la, de la tierra lejana de Walton. Walton, Massachusetts. So he's here to support us. Be with us here today. Los boricuas que digan huepa. Los boricuas que digan huepa. Nos reunimos como hijos e hijas de Borinquen, levantándonos sobre los hombros de nuestros ancestros, los ancestros indígenas, que sin miedo se enfrentaron a los colonizadores españoles, esos mismos españoles que a pesar de sus intentos de erradicar nuestra cultura en nuestros cabellos, en nuestra lengua, en nuestra estatura, se demuestra el mestizaje que junto con esa raza hermosa africana hoy crean el ser puertorriqueño. ¡Qué dicha! ¡Qué dicha! Que desde Borinquen hasta Brockton y para el mundo podemos reunirnos como una diáspora fuerte, una diáspora unida, que manda oraciones, buenos pensamientos, que se organiza y que lucha para construir en el, para el futuro lo que a nosotros se nos ha legado. ¿Dónde está el huepa? En este momento les voy a pedir a cada uno de ustedes que tomen una mano cercana a ustedes. Tomen una mano cercana a ustedes. ¿Me oyen? ¿Se oye bien? Que no se quede ninguna mano sin agarrar a la otra. Que cada mano esté junto a la otra. Como una sola comunidad en saludo. El Señor esté con vosotros. Oremos. Amado Dios y Padre bueno. Gracias por la oportunidad y el privilegio de ser una comunidad puertorriqueña fuerte en la diáspora. Gracias, Señor, por habernos bendecido, por la dicha de tener una espiritualidad cimentada en la fe de nuestros ancestros. Gracias, Padre bondadoso, porque en medio de los imperios que han tratado de borrar nuestra cultura, nuestra lengua, nuestra raza, nuestra cocina, nosotros continuamos caminando hacia adelante sin que se desvanezcan nuestros sueños y nuestras esperanzas, pues nuestro deseo de libertad radica en ti. En esta noche, una vez más nos presentamos ante ti humillados, rogando que escuchen nuestro clamor, un clamor que se levanta desde nuestras entrañas y que pide paz, paz para nuestra tierra de Borquén, paz para los hijos tuyos que en Borinquen sufren, paz para los que duermen ante la intemperie sin seguridad, paz para los que se sienten desesperanzados ante un gobierno atroz, que busca solo el privilegio y el saciamiento de sus propios apetitos económicos. Paz en medio de los corazones de los poderosos en cuyas manos está el legislar y el promover una cultura de amor. Señor, extendemos nuestras manos en solidaridad para con los hijos de Borín. Y pedimos que tú abras nuestra mente, nuestro entendimiento, para construir agendas que liberalicen a los pobres de esa tierra. De igual manera, Señor, toca los corazones duros de cada uno de los agentes de poder en este país. Toca el corazón del presidente Donald. Toca el corazón de los líderes legislativos para que puedan mirar a nuestra isla con los mismos ojos de compasión que tú nos miras a cada uno de nosotros. Señor, que nuestras oraciones se conviertan en buenas obras proactivas, no tan solo para el beneficio egoísta nuestro, sino para el de nuestras comunidades y el futuro que aún 
no hemos visto. Pedimos, oh buen Dios, que esta misma energía, que este fuego vivo, se mantenga y se extienda desde la comunidad puertorriqueña en Brocto, con los guatemaltecos, con los hondureños, con los venezolanos, con los cubanos, con los dominicanos, con los brasileños, los chilenos, los uruguayos, los bolivianos y cada uno de los hijos sí, tuyos de habla española. A ti clamamos, oh Señor, sabiendo que tú nos escuchas, sabiendo que tú pones en nuestro corazón este deseo de paz. Nosotros quizás en esta noche oramos en el nombre de muchos. Yo oro en el nombre de Cristo, mi Señor y Salvador. Amén. Que la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo, el Espíritu Santo, con ustedes ahora y para siempre. Amén. 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 During our... Oh, Michelle, she's here? Michelle. We want to acknowledge and say thank you, represent State Representative Michelle Dubois. Chair. Michelle, where are you hiding? Come over. And welcome her and thank you for attending. Hi. Hello everybody, I'm dressed very casually because I'm trying to be fit, so I work out on Mondays and Fridays, so um, these pictures uh, shall not really represent what I normally look like, so please forgive my casual appearance. But you know, I have it so much better than so many people living in Puerto Rico right now who are in casual clothes because their clothes have been washed away and ruined and wet and torn and battered. And um, I just had to make sure that I could be here to be in unity with all of you and all of them on the island. My empathy is big, and as all of your hearts are big, and I hope we can work together to try to do something. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Rico. Tito Quinones, who has yet to have spoken here. And I am going to invite him because he sat at the round table with Latin Women's Association, Dina Diverse Initiatives Neighborhood Association, Angel Cosme, as well as Ashley Park Neighborhood Association. With respect, Tito Quinones, before we go to our song, come and say some words for your Boricua family. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, all the, everybody, all the officials, everyone who's uh, given us, opened us the door, the mayor for opening the door for us today. Um, Latin Women Association for uh, sticking, you know, I don't like to talk in front of crowds, I get nervous. Um, <laughs> but I'm very grateful uh, and privileged to be a Latin Puerto Rican from, um, and, and a Bronctonian that we can uh, get together and, and pray for our country. Um, and we're free to do that. That's the most important thing. We're free, and we don't have to pay for anything to do it. And uh, the, le the lives that they pay in Puerto Rico for us to do this for them, it doesn't cost us anything to come up here and pray and get together. Not just today, but we need to do it more often. Um, so thank you for giving me this privilege to talk. And um, I just don't want to forget where, how we're going to get aid to Puerto Rico. So we're going to close it out by letting you guys how you can help Puerto Rico. So not, we don't have enough copies. We're actually making some. We're going to wrap up in about two minutes. We're going to end in a song. Um, but I just wanted to talk. If, you're, if your heart feels compelled to, to help Puerto Rico in some way, there's two suggestions. These are just suggestions. They're not endorsements in any sense. I reached out to a reputable organization, and they said that these are vetted organizations who do work, who have done work in Puerto Rico, that the money and the supplies actually get there. So the first one is the Puerto Rican Community Foundation, and the website is there. Also, the Hispanic Federation Foundation. Um, you can, the link is there. If you um, don't have a copy, you can take a picture of it from someone who does. We're going to hopefully distribute some more. And now we're going to end with, with a song. Thank you so very much, sincerely, for coming to me. Thank you. On the song, we're going to do a song, and then I'm going to pass it over. The final ending is with Latin Women's Association. 
We have Minister Sharon Drayton, who's going to sing a song. It is in English. I also would like to invite Iglesia de Dios Altismos Restaurando El Cario. Si hay una de sus ministerios que pueden cantar una canción encerrando nosotros en español para la comunidad latina. Y yo creo que el hermano está ahí, que yo oí cantando en el otro Soy domingo. Sharon. Ven. Oh my, oh my God, I am so excited. I went to service last Sunday and he sang beautiful in Spanish. Yes, so we're gonna have the Goldman's come and with respect, yes. We're gonna start with the youth because we have to encourage and empower our youth. And after their song, Minister Drayton, who's a sister of mine's now a minister of affiliated ministry of her own, will then sing and then we'll pass it over to Latin Women's Association for the final Amen. closing. Yes, hermanos, ven, introduce it. Amen. Oh, so excited. Dios le bendiga. God bless everybody. My name is Nelson Nunez. Um, this is my brother, Francisco Nunez. Um, we're going to worship a song real quick in Spanish. Um, basically, it's just telling God that we love him. It's important to say that and to recognize that he's important in our lives and that's why we need him. Um, so join us in worship. Amen. Amen. I'm a little nervous, so. Cristo, yo te amo. Cristo, yo te amo. No hay nadie como tú. Jesús. Y no sé. Glory shall come in. 
when the saints go to worship, that's when deliverance will take place. When the saints go up and pray. stand together and we do work together in the city of Brockton to represent all of our people so we can never forget we have to continue to work together anything we can continue to do at the state level please do not hesitate to contact us we are in your corner and we will never forget so God bless you all so many people together, different nationalities, different colors. It's, this is like a, a rainbow, different colors in here together. This is great, I love it. This. So I'm gonna end it up giving my microphone to my daughter, Anna Figueroa, who's the spoken person for the Latin Women Association, and she's gonna close up. Thank you, um, thank you everyone for coming. Um, like Ines said, um, it's a privilege to see all these beautiful faces here supporting our Puerto Rico today. Um, I want to say one thing, I'm going to make it short. Um, we want to be here for our island, Puerto Rico. We want to fight. We want to make a difference. Vote. Yes. Fill out your census. Go and vote at the polls. And let's get this done for Puerto Rico. Good night. Yes.